In today's video, we take a look at two ways for DJs to work quickly in Ableton Live. Find out how, coming up. Thank you for watching P.TV where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. Now let's get into the video. As the DJ, warping audio is what makes Ableton Live so powerful. It lets you speed up or slow down the audio without it pitching up or pitching down. It also lets things fall right into sync as far as blending two tracks together and is a powerful tool and the basis of making DJ edits in Ableton Live, um, making quick remixes or bootlegs. It all starts with warping. So here are my two techniques on how to warp quickly, especially coming from the mind state of a DJ. So first, let's take a look at this audio. This right here is a, a beat I did a while ago. Currently, the tempo of the session in Ableton is 120 BPM, as seen right here. But I know that uh, this song is actually 100 BPM. So when I just play the song in Ableton, it just plays normally. And if I turn on the metronome so you can hear uh, the tempo that Ableton is running at, you'll hear that it's completely off. So, so what warping does is it takes the audio and places it on the same grid as the Ableton session. So all the beats start on the one, uh, beats and bars, and it just kind of grids it across. Very similar to beat gridding in Serato, Rekordbox, Tractor, etc. So just like in those softwares, the first thing you're going to have to do is find the first beat, first downbeat, or also known as the one. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this marker right here, this lower triangle, and then put it where the you think the downbeat is. So I know the downbeat's right here. Just zoom in real tight. And then let me turn this from the trigger off. So. Okay, so that's right on the downbeat, starts right there, no gap. So the two methods of doing, uh, of warping uh, quickly, the first one would be if you've run this audio through your DJ software, such as uh, Rekordbox, Serato, Tractor, you'll get a BPM. So what you'll do is you take that BPM that your DJ software gave you and then type it in the, the top left right here and then go ahead and click right click here and put set 111 here and take this first uh, marker right here the this first square the square to the furthest to the left and select this right here warp such and such BPM from here now notice it says 100 and this is 100 so those two are linked so if I just change it to some random value you'll see now it just says uh, 110 to match that so again you just go ahead and uh, analyze the audio in your DJ software, whatever BPM it gives you, type it in this top left corner, left click, I'm sorry, right click, and then click on warp BPM from here. Now let's turn the metronome back on and give this audio a listen with the metronome. And it's pretty much on, on tempo. So what you'll want to do is you want to kind of scroll towards the end of the song and just make sure it still stays on. Just like any beat grids, you might it might get out of sync towards the end of the song and you can adjust it there. So, still pretty much on beat. And if it gets off a of beat, say it's over here, what you're going to want to do is just double click any point and it'll create a warp marker and just drag it to where it should be on the the grid of bars and beats. Okay, so that's the first way, is using the DJ software to get the right BPM, sticking it in uh, the master, or the BPM of the session, and then going to the beginning of, of the one, and just using warp BPM from here. So that's pretty quick, especially if it's audio that you've already ran through your DJ software, just gives you one less thing to think about. But say, your warping audio that you haven't run through your DJ software. 
So that would be an extra step to actually take it to another piece of software, take the time to analyze it, and then bring it back. So I've actually found another method of warping that's very fast. So let's just go ahead and undo to the very beginning. Okay, so here's a fresh audio, not warped yet. So let's go ahead and the first step is gonna be the exact same. So find the one, zoom in, make sure it's right there at the beginning. I'm gonna go ahead and right click. Again, set 111 here. Notice the BPM here at the top is 120. So it's not the actual matching BPM of the song. Then again, I'm gonna take this warp marker here, right click, and then instead of selecting this one right here, I'm gonna go ahead and select the one above it, which is warp from here straight. So what this is gonna do is, Ableton is gonna go ahead and just, based on the length of the track and uh, other factors, it's gonna go ahead and just warp it out not gonna give it any warp markers, but just kind of put it to a grid roughly. And I found that it's, it's pretty, pretty accurate. So from there, we'll listen to the audio. Super fast because it's going to this BPM, which is 20 BPM higher. But what you'll notice here is right here, segment BPM, it's 100, which is pretty, it's correct. So from there, Say I didn't know the BPM of the song, I could use this, knowing that it's on beat and on grid, and go ahead and plug it up here. And then again, right click and warp from here using this segment BPM that was given, which is pretty accurate. And again, you just go ahead and listen through to the audio with the metronome on. So you have an idea if it's on beat or not, and it is. So I've, I've actually started using this method uh, more often just because I don't have to go between different softwares or check other um, beat grids or BPMs and other software or taking the time out to analyze it any other way. And just using this segment BPM after clicking on, once again, clicking on warp from here straight. So that's, that's currently my preferred method. And it's a method that I would suggest you, you start looking at just so you don't rely on a DJ software. But again, that first method I gave where uh, the audio has already been ran through your DJ software, you can kind of skip the step of warping it straight and having to warp it again uh, just because you have that BPM information again. So now I'm gonna take a, uh, a moment out to discuss the different warp, mo warp modes in Ableton Live. So currently we're using uh, the complex warp mode. You can select the different warp modes here. Complex is gonna be similar to the master tempo or key lock you get on uh, your DJ softwares or CDJs. Complex Pro is similar to Complex, but it retains uh, audio quality a little bit better and you get higher audio quality, uh, especially if you're stretching something like 100 BPM or you're slowing something all the way down, you're speeding it up very fast, you're re you'll retain that uh, a higher audio quality instead of uh, just Complex. So. If you've heard CDJs and you've put the pitch on wide and you try to pitch it up or pitch it down really wide, you notice there's like a graininess and a, a loss of quality. Complex Pro gives you uh, a better quality if you're stretching audio uh, wide like that. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the reason I really don't use Complex Pro, if I'm just doing like a couple BPM change, there isn't that much difference in audio quality especially if you're just doing like a quick bootleg or a quick edit. Uh, it just makes sense to just keep it on complex, especially be because uh, as shown in my previous video, you can go ahead and set it up so anytime you warp audio, it warps in complex. Also, there's these other ones. So repitch is gonna be um, just like the pitch control on a turntable. So you speed it up, the voices are gonna speed up and pitch up. Uh, you pitch that, you use slow it down, voice is gonna pitch down. Uh, beats is more for uh, if you're chopping up a, a drum loop or something uh, percussive and not so much, uh, that doesn't have too many things going on in the audio. Um, each of these other, these three right here kind of give you a different texture and a different uh, sound. Uh, 
I find myself using it more creatively, not to actually, you know, uh, mess with audio with other than if I'm going for a desired effect. So as a DJ, I would say, go ahead and uh, focus on these three. If you're looking to pitch up a sample like uh, you would on a turntable, I would say go with repitch and complex is my default and I think it should be the default for any DJ. And complex pro, like I've stated, is if you're making huge jumps in BPM and pitching stuff all the way up or all the way down, definitely look at a complex pro. So again, that's my overview on warping quickly in Ableton Live and a quick overview on the different warp modes and what they could be useful for. So once again, you can either use the BPM given by your DJ software and use that as uh, the BPM for the session and then go ahead and warp from there. Or you can use the segment BPM after selecting warp from here straight and go ahead and plugging that number in here if you haven't run the audio through another DJ software. So go ahead and play with these. I'm sure that after you use these methods, you'll be warping very fast. I know when I first started warping and I didn't really have a tutorial on how to warp quickly, I would have to warp um, you know, bar by bar, beat by beat, and it would take me almost hours to get a couple songs done. But now you can go ahead and get those done very quickly in a matter of seconds. And I just wanted to share this information with you guys. And I wanna see more DJs out there warping working on edits and bootlegs. So go ahead and use this information. So those are two ways to warp quickly in Ableton Live from a DJ's perspective. So question of the day, what kind of audio are you going to start warping as a DJ? Is it gonna be full tracks? Is it gonna be loops? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And thank you for watching P.TV where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. See you next time.